Nice. I like those kind of people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he played Dredge once or twice, but... Okay. So, and the interesting thing is if he wins his match, he is probably going to end up in first seed in the top eight. Play yeah. draw. I'll play. Uh, Do you want a turn? You don't get one. Yeah. Oh, we've got a pretty good matchup. Um, this is going to be pretty indicative of how the format's shaping up right now, actually. A new, like, flavor of the week, I guess? Yeah, so we, we've got uh, the... On the right, Almost we, modern John deck. Yeah, we have right. Anthony Mandola. He's playing a modern deck with uh, some revised dual lands. You got hymns and tops. Yeah, it, that's about it. <coughs> uh, some cyborg cards, maybe. But uh, yeah, most of this deck: Blood Red Elves, Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant, Death Right Shaman. Didn't we see these Blood Red Elves? This this one on modern GP or two. Yeah. Or three. It might be one of the better decks in modern. Uh, on, and on the left, we have Kevin Gerhardt. He is playing the Jerry T. Todd Anderson uh, dis built um, Shardless Agent bug yep. deck. Uh, did they play Baleful Strix in that deck? They did not. That was his, yeah, this so is, he's got a couple new additions. Um, so Shardless Agent is basically a green-blue blood braid elf. Yeah, it looks like Baleful Strix is taking the place of Liliana over there. Mm-hmm. Ooh, there's a Pernicious Deed and a GT in the main deck, too. Yeah, He's got some real spice yeah. in this matchup. Uh, so it looks like Kevin has the first Death Rite Shaman of the match, uh, putting Anthony in an awkward position with his fetch land. Man, there's even Terminates in Anthony's decks instead of some of the Durab 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 mm -hmm. We literally just showed up straight from PTQ season. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's really awesome that this can be a deck. Oh, absolutely. And, and we're not trying to rag on the deck at all. No, like, it's awesome. The, yeah, the, this deck is capable of doing some things. I think it's like a little... It's in the finals of the Grand Prix right yeah. now as we speak. Pat Cox easily dispatched his first two finals, or first two top eight opponents, including, uh, I know his first round opponent was Matt Nass, mm -hmm. playing his elf deck, destroyed by Jones. Yeah, uh, this deck is the very definition of fair. Uh, it tries to... You got some uh, like small advantages, some nice value cards, you know. We don't even get to play with Brainstorm, okay? Yeah. We just get to play Swamp, Taiga, Dark Confidant. Is this good? Right. Uh, in modern, this would be a stomping ground. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the formats are far different, so. Anthony gets to Abrupt Decay the Dark Confidant off a fetch land uh, in Anthony's Railroad and Wasteland, so he's pretty far ahead due to this Death Rite. Shaman. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and there's two more lands to fuel it down there. Yeah, Wasteland uh, absolutely helps uh, fuel the Death Rite Shaman. Uh, one thing about uh, Anthony's deck that I'm not a huge, huge fan of, although Anthony made room for it regardless, is you don't see Wasteland in the Jun decks very often. Uh, but you do I see it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of colored mana. Uh, issues that like abrupt decay, terminate, things like that. But that doesn't stop you know you know Kevin from playing, you know abrupt decay and wasteland in the same deck. I don't so why if, should it stop Anthony? Yeah. I don't know if you necessarily want four if you're trying to also cast cards like blood braid elf. Right. You definitely want your lands in play, but but you might want two because it's a way to kill I don't know creeping tar pit mm -hmm. or academy ruins. I can name a ton That's of. That's a good way to like. Lands. You have a lot of use for colorless <laughs> lands. And, yeah, uh, the done next. So, and you're probably the kind of if your opponent's places. gonna stumble, you want to be able to punish them yeah. uh, somewhat. So, you also look like the kind of deck that would want to play more lands than most others. Yes, you definitely want to play more lands, and wastelands helps uh, let you do something with those lands after yeah. you've drawn too many. If you're flooding, you can try and you know take your mana, uh, uh, draw down to a normal level while. So it looks like a Tarmogoyf off two, a basic force and swamp for mm -hmm. Anthony is matched by a Baleful Strix from Kevin. And actually, there were four Wastelands in Pat Cox's deck in the finals. Oh, and okay. in the finals of the Grand Prix. Four Wastelands in the John deck. Awesome. Well, there's, uh, at the moment, uh, it's like Anthony, uh, yep. and, uh, his, his Tarmogoyf is running, <clears throat> not matching up favorably against his Baleful Strix. Nope. The old elvish visionary that takes down a Tarmogoyf? Yeah. When, yeah, where do we get one of those? Sign me up. Not really. I mean, I want to be playing cards that, you know, don't really combat, but yeah. if I was. Yeah, Belfold Strix is uh, one of the good ones. So, a Thossies from Anthony matched by a Brainstorm from Kevin. 
luckily hiding the uh, the valuable cards in his hand. I think I saw a brainstorm, an abrupt decay, and a him. He's debating okay. which one's so which one? to hide. Yeah. <clears throat> it looks like the brainstorm and the him. I okay. think he's got the Tarmogoyf pretty much on lock right now, and he just wants to. Uh, yeah, he doesn't want to. Maybe he's trying to hedge against a future like. Uh, Dark Confidant. Yep. Yeah, future Dark Confidant. Oh, so. that is his only spell. In right. Hand. So yeah. So Kevin has quite a few extra lands. So that's, that's quite unfortunate that he had to use the brainstorm there. And but that's why he needs to hide the other one. Yeah, absolutely. I feel well, like what, one thing he can do, he can, uh, if you put the brainstorm on top, he can brainstorm, put two lands back, shuffle, cast the him to draw. Yeah, I think that's what he set up and what yeah. he's going to do. Goif to a 4 5. Anthony misses his land drop. Wow, that's uh, <laughs> tough for him. This him means, that means oh. him is going to hit all spells. Yeah. Wow. Maybe some uncastable spells, but. Oh, another wasteland run there. And I believe that's a Jace. Jace? Those are some of the too. best cards you could have brainstormed into. Uh, not, yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby. Well, in my hand, sure. all lands? Yeah, those. Are, that's okay. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Brainstorm, game. That's how the card works, right? Yeah, Brainstorm's quite a magic card. Yeah. Uh, I would be, I think Kevin's uh, <laughs> firmly in the driver's seat. He may, uh, may be in a little bit of, like, a minor amount of trouble if uh, this, these Baleful Strikes get removed. Yes. And then the Tarmogorf can go threaten the, the Jace. But well, outside of that, I don't see uh, much else getting in uh, Kevin's way of taking game one here. Yeah. I mean, even then, he needs to lose the Baleful Strikes in a situation where you can't just block then bounce the Goyf or something similar. Yeah, or preemptively bounce the Goyf, things like that. Yeah, but it looks like one of his lands is a Creeping Tar Pit, too, so he actually has one of his kill conditions in yes. hand. Yes. Uh, one thing I really like about this uh, bug deck <laughs> is that it plays all powerful spells, all of them cascadable from Shard of the Sages, so no spell pierces or spell snares or anything like that. Yeah, you cannot play those cards if you're playing right. with cascade spells. Uh, and even some sweet ones like Ancestral Vision. Also has gets a lot of use ooh. out of his lands. Bloodbraid Elf and Eternal Witness off that him. Yeah, so those are good ones. Especially the well, the witness doesn't really matter because the uh Death Rite would just eat the land that it gets back. Yeah. But still good cards to hit. Because that Death Rite Shaman isn't necessarily gonna stay around forever. Right, right. Uh can in the meantime, uh uh oh. Uh, Inquisition. Wow. The worst possible. Whoa. Sorry, swing and a uh, miss. I'm curious, uh, what's um, what's Anthony's uh, Inquisition two, two. proxy split? Awkward. Pay the two life, man. Yeah. If you need a card, you need a card. I agree. With Jace being one of the cards that you're going to have to beat, like, I want to take Jace in this match, but I want to take Bloodbred Elf in the match instead of that over Jace. Yep. Absolutely. I want to be able to take a sneak attack. Oh, yes. Or an omniscience, or literally just whatever I want. Yeah. Take cards that have any <coughs> mana cost instead of... Oh, yeah. We're not even close to the amount of pain that's uh, the max we can take in this deck. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's got a Fate Seal. Oh, wow. Keep him off I'm, of... I'm okay with that. I like, like that. Uh, any any like spell that stays on reasons. top. Uh, or, except though, I guess, for, like, Abrupt Decay. Yeah. Any land goes to the... Goes to the bottom. I might let him keep Bayou. <sighs> uh... Yeah, I'd probably let him keep Bobby. There is a Mouse Repulse in this deck to punish him for that. And it's like a possibility, but not not super likely that Mouse Repulse is. That so there is a Deathrite Shaman to do match some, Kevin's. Some fights. I think it's about time that we just. I mean, I guess it doesn't really yeah. matter when he exiles the land. I like this brainstorm. Uh, Kevin's a little light on action yeah yeah jace is really you know the fate seal there puts yeah. it out of goy frames though if the strix dies it gets back into goy frames right so yeah just right like yeah uh, yeah just went interrupt decay or lane into a bolt mm -hmm. or something but you know uh one thing to notice about uh kevin's deck uh, no force of wills in the yeah. main deck so like huge huge advantage here yeah uh-oh shardless agent do you like value Oh, it's like a free shuffle, too. Oh, is that two cards in Anthony's hand for that him? 
Maelstrom oh, Pulse. Yeah, Maelstrom Pulse. He did. Gonna get the land. That um, looks like it should decent, close things Decent off. timing from Kevin. It's kind of interesting how all these creatures, you got Baleful Strix and uh, Charlotte's Agent that are artifact creatures. <clears throat> Does he have an Academy Runes? Because that would be sweet. Yeah, he does not, but I would like that. One thing I didn't see, he does not have, he only has his thoughts he's in his board. Yeah, like he is. He is clearly come to... Uh, game this matchup. Yeah, this is what he came to win. Yeah, combo, what's that? Who cares? Yeah. Hope I can board in eight cards and win. Not dead. So it looks like another Baleful Strix has joined the party. And we're going to start attacking with the first one. Sure. <clears throat> um, I think that removes all the lands and graveyards, too. It Though might. I, it's not really like Anthony has cards to cast with that mana. Right. He neither has lands nor spells to cast with said lands. Yeah, three mana, two, two, target player discards, two, a little bit above the curve. It, Man, I really should have used that one when Glenn was in the booth. What? Above the curve. Oh, yeah. You, you, you miss. Uh, Waste info, Anthony, not not too bad off the top. Uh, it's going to take care of the creeping carpet. It will. Which is one of uh, Kevin's big sources of offense until... Um, well, you can just keep pinging away with the Strixes, start mm -hmm. using Death Witch. Oh, geez. That is a GTA in his hand. <laughs> this game's going to be over fly. real yeah. fast. Yeah, not only do we have Jason play and active, and not only is our opponent hellbent, but we have Jite attached to a flying creature. Yeah, this game looks to be completely over. We're like almost a, like approaching the range where, yep, was waiting was to see that. that. Was Anthony, I'm just, <coughs> I'm just conceding. Yeah, I guess, oh wow, we take down this Deathrite Shaman here. Um, it may have been time for like one more Jace Brainstorm. Oh, we're just too far ahead. Yeah. I think we just try and close out the game. Uh, make sure we have time on the clock. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're Anthony, you probably want... Just don't, uh, just don't kill yourself or whatever. Like, this game you're, is... gonna, you're going to lose. Yep. Uh, Outer death right ability with my death right ability. Right. Death right does target, so you can respond. Even the mana ability, because it has a target, does yes. not uh, use this or uses the stack, unlike most mana abilities. Yeah, um, that's unique. The other thing that's unique is uh, the Deathrite Shaman targets the card in the graveyard, yeah. not uh, any player for life gain or anything like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the mana ability thing is an ability is only a mana ability, and mana abilities specifically don't use the stack. Mm -hmm. If it's a triggered ability off of another mana ability, or if it is a ability. An activated ability that adds mana without a target. So because Death Rider is a target, it's not considered a mana ability. It uses a stack. Right. And when you have two of them in play, you end up with these fights where whoever moves first on it just doesn't get the ability to resolve. Oh, Shardless right. Agent. Let's see, what do we hit? Him. Eh, eh they didn't need that one. If you knew it was coming, you could have bounced the target right <coughs> up with Jace. Yeah, which I is, think which is one of my favorite to set up, uh, whatever we wanted on top. Yeah. Because we have this Abrupt Decay. Yeah, why not? We got that one too. Yeah, we could have just brainstormed, basically been a recall. Oh, nope, we're done here. Anthony's had enough. <laughs> yeah. I have what in play? Nothing? Okay. Uh, it's probably time to move on. Yeah. You have Jite and Jace, two of the most unbeatable permanents. Uh, yeah, after, if you go more than a turn or two, I guess yeah. active Jace or active uh, Jite. Pack it in. Let I mean, alone both. Even just one. Like, yeah. one on tap step with either of those, you're probably winning. Yeah. Um, so we go to sideboards. Um... I have Kevin's uh, deck list in front of me, and he is pre-sideboarded. Yep. Uh, don't his, want E-Plague, don't want Duress. His anti-combo measures are already in his main deck. XZ Thoughts are already in his sideboard, so... And Loam. Loam sounds awesome. Yeah, uh, Life of the Loam is the one card that I would bring in if I were Kevin. Um... Let's see. Yeah, board in that over the deed. Yeah. Call it a day. Yeah, uh, I don't really need thoughts. He's not yeah. actually that good. Uh, what about Anthony? Uh, he's got E-Plugs and Duresses not coming in. Pernicious Deed not coming in. Malstrom Pulse, Abrupt Decay possibly coming in. Okay. I actually like Pithy Needle a lot here. 
I think we need a way to stop this Jace, even yeah. if it is killable with a Rupt Decay that pulls the Decay from our Bobs and uh, from our Tarmogoyce. Scavenging Ooze for sure. Yeah. It's just a big, good threat in this matchup. Uh, trumps Tarmogoyce. <clears throat> yep. Even if it uh, trumps your own, that just means you have a Scavenging Ooze doing work in play. Maybe a Red Blast or two. Uh, countering Ancestral Vision seems like a good way to not die. Yeah. Countering Brainstorm seems like a good way to not die. Jace. Countering Jace sounds like a very good way to not die. Yeah, I actually like Red Elemental Blast far more than I like uh, Pything Needle. The only issue, we can't Red Blast plus Blood Braid off very well. Yeah, that's not a great interaction. But I think it's worth the, the blank. Yeah. So, uh, Red Blast, Scavenging Ooze, fourth him maybe. Yeah, him for sure. Uh, Maelstrom Pulse Abrupt Decay. So yeah, this is absolutely cards. absolute card advantage matchup. I think I could uh, stand to take out uh, maybe Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I can see Lightning Bolt being uh, absolutely terrible here. Uh, it does kill Deathrite Shaman though, so that could be a consideration. Right. Maybe Terminate? Yeah. Or, maybe, or maybe the discard spells. I don't like the discard spells, I was about yeah, to say. I, I can see Eternal Witness also being not exceptional. Uh, mm, Deathrite Death Shaman. I think <sighs> you can free up your... Uh, <laughs> Enough. Eternal Witness is a very strong card. I feel like if we brought a Lightning Outside Bolt, of... Eternal Witness gets a lot worse. Yeah, that, that is true. Down. Yeah. So I think you want to board out Witness and Bolts and two of the discard spells. Mm -hmm. Probably the Inquisitions that don't take Jace, Jace the, the Mind Sculptor that we Maybe one of the reasons game. why... That, you could almost pinpoint that's where that's the spot where Anthony lost that game. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> it looks Anth like... Yeah, Anthony had an Inquisition of Kozilek. Try to make uh, Kevin discard a Jace, but Inquisition cannot make somebody discard a Jace. Yep. Uh, Kevin played a Jace and ran away with the game very easily. Yep. Uh, it looks like we've got some updates. Um, the top table is Drew as we expected, I think. Mm -hmm. And as also expected, Ben Perry's Belcher deck defeated Maverick, presumably very handily because he is currently standing right over there and I can see him and he's and, not at the table. Right. Uh, so that probably puts him in first or second seed for the top eight. Just oh. based on draws. Yeah. Can I to, uh, do we know Ben Perry's sideboard? Um, oh yeah. Uh, we're going to get the, the actual physical cards for the sideboard. Oh boy. Unfortunately on camera I used Autumnsville against Ben Weinberg and it's still showing right out. Oh, he actually has cards in his yeah, sideboard. Yeah, cards in your sideboard. We have a forest. I think the forest is actually one of the good cards in the sideboard. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so what makes Ben work? decided to be a spoil sport and play actual cards in his sideboard. Yeah, I don't mess around with that no cards. So. Um, there's a, yeah, a couple of uh, generic uh, We got Xanthus Worms, Carpets, Autumn's Veils. There's a know. bribery. Yeah, bribery, dude, I really want to see that happen to someone. It I almost changed the, uh, had to change the forest out. Oh, he originally had a, uh, the German forest walled Yeah, planes that looks are. like a planes. Yeah. Yeah, that is not very tournament legal. It's, it, you'll get away with it once in a blue moon, but, uh, it's I know some people who have been... Time. Time. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, once in a blue moon you'll get away with it, but with the art of a planes, looks like a forest, it's not gonna fly. I know someone who had a all Euro language Enchantress deck who mm -hmm. played those planes and those walls. Mm -hmm. And like he'd stack his lands appropriately so you always knew. Yeah. But like every time like he'd play a card, his opponent would pick it up to read it because it looks sort of like English. It's the same characters. And he'd be like, yeah. nope, Judge, what is this? <laughs> yeah, right? Especially with a, a friend of deck like Enchantress yeah. where not all of your opponents know what your cards do. Okay, so turn one Verdant Catacombs for Anthony. Bayou. <laughs> shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. We're gonna slow roll the. That's right, right Shaman. Yeah. There we go. Looks uh, like Kevin's gonna match. One good <laughs> Death Rite Shaman deserves another. Off the top. Yeah, why not? I mean, sure. You, draw, a card, you draw one card per it. turn. We put these cards in the deck for a reason. Yeah. Let's so, see. That's why I feel like Anthony's deck is significantly at a disadvantage. 
I feel like Kevin has a lot of very good, like, mid rangey plays. Yeah. Uh, for, like, his second turn, even with three man, he can. Charlotte's Agent, Baleful Strix, Suspend an Ancestral Vision. Well, so does Braidstorm. Anthony. Anthony has Dark Confidant and Tarmogoyf. And they both, I don't think Tarmogoyf is. Uh, Exceptional. I guess Dark yeah. Confidant's pretty good. Dark Confidant is the big advantage Anthony has. Correct. In this matchup, but I don't think it's enough to overcome all of the advantages. So it Kevin looks like has. Anthony's going to make a mana and then figure out what he's doing with it. Inquisition of Kozilek. Potential to get some good cards. It won't get a Jace. Looks like it has its choice so of artifact. We features. have some uh, plane chase cards. Three team. lands, three plane chase cards. It looks like two Baleful Strix and a Shardless Agent. Yep. Team box sets over here. Yeah. We'll even count Underground Sea because it could be in Collector's Edition. It's probably not. No. Definitely not if he's playing it in the tournament. Yeah, that's true. Shuttle right. Agent down. Uh, yeah, sure. That's a, that's probably the card I take. <clears throat> it represents the most dangerous. Yeah, it yeah. represents a free two right, mana. So what of, Anthony uh, does not have is a second land. Oh, it's a so top it's a to help him. Top. Uh, I actually think taking the Charlotte's Agent was kind of a mistake. You want to take a Belfast Strix? I want to take a Belfast Strix because. Uh, the agent is not trading for a Tarmogoyf, mm -hmm. and the agent forces Kevin to use his Deathrite Shaman, um, and when it prevents, like, if he just passes with his Shaman up right here, then Anthony's in a situation where he can't use his Shaman for mana, so it's like he's just stone ranged because of this play. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously he'll get to set up this later, but it gives Anthony a turn window to, say, top into a fetch land, tap, draw, yeah. fetch. Lose the top, get your land, play another two drop. So he's just gonna. I don't like this play from Kevin. He's just going to use the uh, the Deathrite Shaman right away. Looks like he drew another Shardless Agent. Yeah, I like I like just uh, leaving, leaving the fed, leaving the Deathrite Shaman active. Yeah, you aren't really using that mana, so. Right, he's gonna. He, yeah, he's gonna have a mana hole of one, but uh, make sure that uh, Anthony cannot, Anthony cannot like use his. So, Here's an upkeep top. Yeah, upkeep top. Uh, oh, yeah, he doesn't even have to tap the top. He can use it before then. Shows you how much I use Well, there are lands, card. but they look like regular dual lands. Fair. They're far too white-bordered to be fetch lands. Could be one of those people who erases the borders. I know a few of them. Yeah. Bad lands comes into play. Yeah, wow. Um, it's been way too long since I played with top. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, lightning bolt. Nope, no lightning Nothing. bolt. Just a go. Let's see if this is a shardless agent as I thought I saw. I guess if it is, it's not the best situation to cast it in. But I mean, if I you hit an abrupt decay, it's still fine. Oh yeah, sure. If you hit that Why one, it's really, really good. <laughs> well played. I like how it's the first card too when that happens. Just yeah. add it. Um, for those of you unaware, the, when you cascade into Ancestral Visions, you do not have to suspend it. You can just cast it. Yep. Uh, it's, cascade lets you cast a spell without paying its mana cost. Which, incidentally, is the same exact wording as how things get unsuspended. It's cast without ca paying its mana cost. Yep. So that's how the card has to work. Yeah. You may cast without paying its mana cost. Um, this came up in the past with My Desire and Lotus Bloom, way mm -hmm. in the past. Um... That's the original one I remember. Wow, so... Baleful Strix getting taken now with the Lightning Bolt. I would have definitely bolted the Death Rush Shaman there. Oh, uh, this signals that Anthony has a Charm of Life. Okay. Even then, the Death Rush Shamans are going to eat into the... the Charm of Life's ability to... And also, uh, Anthony knows that Kevin has another Baleful Strix. That's true. In his hand, so... Definitely think uh, killing the Death Rush Shaman was... Definitely. The it part. could also be scavenging would be the card. Okay. Even then, like, still like... <clears throat> still like killing the Shaman. Maybe he's got the other bolt? Right. Does. Okay. Kill them both. Looks like Tomoroi's gonna come down. Mm-hmm. 
Kevin not really on the back foot, but has not to a, stabilize the board. Not a Instant yeah. sorcery creature artifact four five. I mean, yeah, sure. Between his uh, you know his end step and his turn, Anthony uh, played three spells or whatever, so he's temporarily ahead on the board. But that is very temporary because Kevin's hand is loaded with both quantity of cards and quality of cards. Baleful Strix, draw a card. Another Baleful Strix. <laughs> Value. Yeah. What a wonderful phrase. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. Yeah. Show this agent into Ancestral Vision. Baleful yep. Strix into more Baleful Strixes. Kevin Gearhart showcasing how, exactly how good some of these cards can be. Yeah. It's kind of fun. It's like, oh, what's the best card I can draw? Baleful Strix. I don't know. Baleful Strix? He's got a wasteland. Because Anthony has been representing that he's Rebel Light. Yeah. Keep him off the four required for Bloodbraid Elf. <coughs> Which is a pretty key turning point. Yeah. Um, Anthony still has his Deathrite Shaman in play. Yeah. We think... need a land as well as the Bloodbraid Elf to get those around. Mm -hmm. Instead of just the Bloodbraid Elf. I believe elf. he has a land on top of his deck. If I'm not mistaken. Looks like he does not have the elf, though. You see a top? Yeah. If he had the elf, I believe he would have. Yes. It looks like uh, Anthony has a Maelstrom Pulse in it as the last card in his hand. I could be wrong on that, but it looked very Maelstrom Pulsey. About the game Maelstrom Pulse. Look Similar, like exact... approximately the same card, anyways. Right. Even a Terminate would be about the same here. All you have to do is take out this Strix. And the next one. Shh. He doesn't know about that yet. Yeah. <sighs> Looks like we're going to make a Death Right mana. Go up down to 4 or 5 again. Not yet. There's oh, still the Wasteland. wasteland. Yep. Made the same mistake. Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, I feel like this is one of the worst possible. Uh, like he bought that bolt could have been saved for something else. Like a Strix? No, well, like the the third Strix, but he could have Maelstrom Pulse two things very easily this game. Yeah, sure. He may not have had the pulse at that time. All right. Well, I mean, I feel like he knew the the top of his deck with uh, with Sensei's top, so. Bail full Strix again. Yeah. Can you beat all three? Well, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a fourth one somewhere in Kevin's deck. Looks like he has another Wasteland. He does. Also has a Time of of his own. So, yeah, I mean, this is a... Uh... It's interesting to me that he chose to exile the Verdict Catacombs from his own graveyard instead of the Wasteland from Kevin's. Right. Might have just been a messed up there. Um, so Kevin attacks back with the Shardless Agent. Mm-hmm. Coast is clear, and things are going to get uh, gummed up uh, a little bit here. Tarmogoyf battles. Uh, Kevin has the marginal advantage with the 1-1 in the air, but we're also looking at the Death Rite Shaman staring down each other. Yeah. It has the not-so-marginal advantage of having five cards in his hand to zero. Well, Anthony has an extra three cards virtually percent sized by the top. Well, you only get to cast one in turn. I'd much rather be in Kevin. Yeah, I agree. I feel like Kevin is significantly far ahead yeah, of him. Yeah, I mean, now. this is just how the top is definitely is how Anthony's going to get back into this. Yeah. Uh, top and finding him a Dark Confidant. Yes. We're going to have to fight for it, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. in theory. Press, uh... See, this is what I don't like about uh, Sensei's top. Uh, that took uh, excessively too long for just the rearranging of the cards. Yeah. Granny gets a pick. The though. exact reason it was banned and extended. Yeah, the, the exact reason it was banned and extended. Uh, two mana. There's the dark confidant. Yeah, I mean, uh, why take multiple minutes to figure out that you should play your best card? Yeah, I mean, he could also be figuring out like. How he wants to stack the other cards. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that looks like Jason Mine Sculptor off the top for Kevin. Um, not bad. Yeah, not bad. <coughs> you could say that would be one way to phrase it. Um, I mean, that'll, that'll all pace Dark Confidant for sure. Yeah. I assume we... Do we bounce the Tarmac Wife and just crash? I like that play a lot. I don't think you can crash with, like, everything. You might want to leave, like, the Charlotte Sage and the Baleful Strix back. Uh, uh, but it's totally I mean, reasonable. Yeah. <clears throat> I really like getting aggressive here because there is no green land in play for Anthony. Mm -hmm. He does have it's a bunch just, of cards to find one, but yeah. that means he's using mana to dig at the top to yeah, find absolutely. one, usually. So it looks like Kevin's going to opt to, I presume, Scry? I can't imagine a Fate Seal here. Yeah, Fate Seal into active top is not a powerful. Is that technically I guess you can do active? It now. Yeah. But, but likely still... the card on top of Anthony. Oh, wow. Oh, he, he is did Fate Seal. Is and gonna Anthony be able... stacked it so the card he wanted was on top. And, oh, wow. Kevin gonna gets get to, to kill the, the top. top. That is brutal. I can't imagine that any card would be better than a top. Yeah. It has to be like a Bounstrom Pulse or something along those lines. It could be a green land. Uh, that I would rather have a Our top of the box. reveals the green land. Yeah. It's interesting because he put those back in that order, so I don't well, know. He, the, the Verdant Catacombs <laughs> was new. Was it new? I don't think it was. Oh, no, it was not. Yeah. So that's an interesting order to stack those in. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Because you're just going to take damage. Because I would imagine that it was I don't, a spell. Well, we assume it's a spell, yeah. Yeah. Fetching down to 16. All right, so what kind of spell do you think Anthony thought was worth keeping? Blood Over. Braid Elf. I would rather have top. I don't think a 3-2 is very impressive. I mean, you asked me what spell I think that yeah, he thinks. right. I could see a Blood Braid Elf. I could yeah. see... Maelstrom Pulse is a way to not immediately die to Jace the Mind Sculptor. <clears throat> um, yeah. Oh, it appears that, uh, let's see. Okay, that was not the match that we were waiting to see if it drew. Oh, uh, we have a result. What's JD Near uh, moves to X1. Uh, likely a step behind Ben Perry in the breaks, probably second seed, okay. unless the other match plays out, which he's going to be third. Second do you know third. if he played... Uh, I have no idea what he's playing. Oh, his opponent? Uh, uh, I can ask him. Let's see. Uh, a pernicious right. deed comes right. down for Anthony. Uh, maybe that was the card that he kept? JD, um, what did you play last round? Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The yeah. deed and a death ray shaman. That's kind of interesting that he's extending further into his own pernicious deed with the planeswalker in play. Um. Right. Yeah. Um, it's just an awkward situation. For yeah, pernicious, pernicious deed, deed will not uh, destroy planeswalkers because when pernicious deed was printed, they did not have planeswalkers. Oh, Anthony already uses one mouse pulse. So oh, he only has one. A, um, oh no, he has a second post board. Never mind. But okay. I think he's helping. I think the card he kept was Pernicious Deed. Yeah. Which is very not the card he wants here. It's uh, possible he missed the interaction there, so it doesn't kill a Jace. Yeah. But uh, Land Still Lex have been doing that for quite a while, where they're playing Planeswalker plus D yes. as their threat. I can even Jason Ford all the way back to Grand Prix Columbus 2010 was doing that. Mm hmm. Um, nice interaction. Deed's a powerful card. It's expensive, but if you have a way to keep something in play through a deed, yes, it's a very good card. Let's see. There have been Nick Fit decks that have featured Liliana the Veil. Uh, yep. Yeah, Rainstorm for Kevin. Tarmogoy. Shardless Agent. Land. So, if Kevin so chooses, he can have both of those in play. It looks like he's just going to throw back some lands and Charlotte's agent through them. Sure. Really, he's going to use the shuffle effect. Okay. He's going to throw away a 
Wasteland, which I would actually like here almost. Yeah, uh, Wasteland is excellent here, in my opinion. In order to... Oh, Tar Pit is going to start cracking in there. Okay. Okay. Well... Kevin looks like he's just trying to close before the Dark Confront starts card advantaging mm -hmm. the game away. Wow. Bob reveals Inquisition, which is shockingly good this late into the game. Yeah. It's going to be able to take out the Charlotte Agent. But I think Kevin's is, is not card, actual like quantity of cards. I mean, it's yeah. just like having like a way that use all 60 like Kevin basically has access to all 60 of his cards he's drawing a ton of cards he has an active Jason play he just wants a way to actually win the game and that's what Creeping Tarpet's doing yep. though it does die to pernicious deed for zero it's possible that that's what the deed is trying to do uh cause Anthony really only has terminates and lightning bolts otherwise to kill it mhm mm uh, yeah, there's one thing that Abrupt Decay does in fact solve that, uh, or does not solve that British Steed does. Let's see. Kevin, uh, let's see, what is Anthony going to have to do to come back into this game? Bloodbraid Elves? I, I believe it starts with hitting the, uh... Maelstrom Pulse to take out two Tarmogoyce and a Shardless Agent. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Kevin's hand is stacked. Like, he actually chose to attack for three damage rather than play two Tarmogoyce. Kevin jokingly points at the Hymnatroc as the card that he should uh, take with the Inquisition. Not so much of a joke. Uh, Kevin can uh, well, use his Jace to bounce a creature and then, oh. and then him in a way. It's a good combo. Oh, him hits for Kevin. Um, I usually sequence those the other way around. Because, like, okay. if the him hits their best card, you can reevaluate what their yeah, best card is after right. that. Um, Whereas now it's just random. Let's see what happens. There's no... I mean, it's just always better to have more information after the decision. The, it hits the two other, spells, yeah. him and Tarmogoy. The only thing... Uh, about that is it's an Inquisition and not a Thought Seize. That's so true, so I might run out of targets. Yes. Okay, that's a very fair assessment. I mean, I still think I would sequence it the way uh, you suggested and so the way Anthony did. But... Kevin draws a Wasteland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He actually drew a card that he put back with uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor really? for once. Okay. Well, he, he brainstormed last turn. Okay. And, uh, let's see. Brainstorm. Oh, that looks like another Shardless Agent and a Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah. Two, presumably, lands going back. Probably just going to cascade straight through them this turn. It's actually uh, interesting that Kevin actually needs to, uh, do something uh, to... Break through this deed? Uh, not break through the deed, but to prevent the Deathrite Shamans from actually uh, kind of chipping away at Kevin. Okay, I mean, like, the Tar Pit is one thing that uh, has value, but like I don't think uh, it's going to get there by itself, especially because Anthony can just blow his deed at whatever point. Okay. Um... I think you would want to make... Uh, Anthony, well, I don't think the deed is really looming over the game. The the non-Jace permanents are actually favoring Anthony. Um, I mean, I think Kevin has another... I, we have an attack here Kevin with has, our oh. Strix and our uh, Creeping Tarpet. Well, I think Kevin can uh, effectively play a second Deathrite Shaman from hand. And sort of yeah, over there. And that, will, that will draw the Deathrite Shaman battle. Uh-huh. Especially when uh, Anthony is uh, tied on tight on mana. Yes, so he cannot start draining Kevin as easily. Yeah, five six timer voice. Maybe Kevin's debating if he wants another shaman in play. Kevin looks like oh he's gonna go in for two while Anthony is tapped out here. Anthony falling to six. 
Um, okay. I, like I kind of like that. Yeah. I, I mean, Anthony's going to have to start using his mana with the Deathrite Shamans to try and tread water. Dark Hawk final reveals... He also has the Bob that he has to kill. Reveals him. Anthony down to four. Kevin's got quite a clock going right now. Yeah. So, yeah, and when this deed uh, blows up the world, it's not like Anthony has a superior rebuilding ability. No, uh, absolutely Kevin has not. everything. He has the lands, he has the cards in hand. So, he has the Jace the Mind Sculptor. His way through the permanents on board is Baleful Strix, Dark Confidant. Yeah. Yeah. Slow and grindy way through, but eventually a way will be clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kevin's hand is just so stacked too. Yep. Even uh, even if Anthony has to sweep and ends up doing so, I don't know how he's gonna come back out of this ahead. Even as a Kevin will guaranteed have a Jason play after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this just seems like a. Yeah, I mean, I I honestly feel like Anthony just blew his uh, removal spells way too liberally. Uh, like one. One of his uh, lightning bolts hit one of Kevin's uh, Baleful Strixes, and then he Maelstrom Pulsed another single copy of Baleful Strixes, and like, well, Kevin just gaining on all of these advantages. I feel like the first bolt was somewhat necessary, uh, and the second one was on his third Strix of the game, which is our second Strix of the game. It should be yeah. enough to you know, seal the way through. But it wasn't, I mean, the Strix was kind of just there. Uh, it was stopping our armor boy. Yeah. We got it in one hit. Bounces to armor boy. It looks like we're gonna see the old him combo. Oh, nope, just gonna crash. Oh, no, this is the old bash him with everybody combo. It's Anthony dropping to uh dead? Uh no, he can chump lock the charm boy for the mob. Okay, so dead? <coughs> Uh, not actually. Shard, Shard of this agent, Baleful Strix, attack for three. Okay, so one. Yeah, one. I, assuming he gained two life last turn to stay out of onboard dead wing. Yep, Anthony down to one. Yeah, I don't think there's actually a way for him to get out of this. Mm -hmm. Especially because he had to pop the deed there. Yeah. And even then, I don't even know if there's a way for him to win post deed. Tarmogoyf hits six, seven, it looks like. Not a small death rate shaman, so yeah. Kevin Gerhardt, uh, with his mid-range slayer, he's uh, yeah really built his deck to feast on these mid-range decks, and he uh, he t 